everyone. My name is Maisha and I'm a Sephora beauty director and this is Ricarda, my model today. Hola. So we are gonna be doing uh, kind of a natural lifted sort of eye. I would say this is a, a really like a basic eye that you can do. I just kind of am very intentional with the things that I'm doing and I try to explain as well as I can uh, things you can do to make your eye look more lifted, more open, make your eyelid look big and round. These are things I do on myself on camera, but I really feel like it um, works really well on any eye, but especially a mature eye. I think there's a misconception that you can't use shimmer and there's certain things that you can't do, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna go over it and I promise you, if you watch this a few times, follow along. Um, this will up your makeup game. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do um, an eye with a sort of intention of it being lifted. I always say that like makeup can do a lot of things, but you don't wanna entirely change your, your face. I feel like makeup that changes your entire bone structure oftentimes doesn't look good in person. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just wanna make you look the best you can. Okay. And we wanna make sure that we don't do things that unintentionally drag down the eye. Um, and my method for that is um, really using that upper lash line using darker colors or medium colors there, not going too heavy on the bottom because that's gonna drag down the eye and then applying concealer in a way where it's gonna lift the eye and just kind of make it overall look brighter. I have a question. Yeah. You just said not going too heavy on the bottom because it drags down the eye. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. Yeah, yeah. so okay, my mom does this. My mom doesn't wear a lot of makeup, but I guess she's a child of the 80s, she graduated high school in the 81 or something. And it, we went on vacation and she pulls out a black eyeliner and she only puts it on the bottom. And I was like, you're dragging down your entire eye. Oh, and wow. it's it's that's a dramatic sort of like example of it, but Whatever you do on top, like maybe a black eyeliner, like I have a wing liner on or mm -hmm. something, I kind of did half of that on the bottom, not even that, okay. so that the emphasis is on like how big my lashes are and how oh, like winged out the top wow. is. That's but if I were to go really dark on the bottom, it would it would be a look, but it would kind of drag down my eye. It wouldn't look as bright anymore. It would be more sultry, a little wow, bit more like, okay. you know. I like that look too. It's a little bit more rock star. Right. Looks a little bit okay, like, right. you know, dark circle kind of look. Okay. And the vibe we're going for is like a little brighter. Okay. So cool. whatever we do on top, do about half as much on the bottom or a third as much if you want to have that bright lifted look. Okay. Yeah, let's so, do bright. <laughs> bright and lifted is always, always nice. Okay. So we're going to start out with concealer. Those of you at home, you can use a primer. That always works well. We always recommend eye primer. This is the Fenty uh, Pro Filter Concealer, and it's sort of self-setting. It's super matte, so it's gonna kind of work as our primer. So I'm gonna use that. This is a shade 350. Okay. My hands are sanitized, so I'm just gonna use the back of my hand. Um, all the brushes I'm using today are from uh, Sephora Collection. They're the Makeup Match Collection. This is the concealer brush. So Ricardo already has a bit of eye cream on. I never put concealer or anything around the eye with a, without a little bit of eye cream, so it has some cushion. So we're just gonna do an overall base, and then when we're done with the eye makeup, we're gonna add some finishing touches, just in case we get some fallout, things like that. So go ahead and close. So I'm gonna do kind of an overall light wash of color. I'm especially gonna do it on the lid, so the lid looks nice and bright and lighter. Brighter colors always make things look um, larger and brighter and they attract a lot more light. Not so close to the lash line because that's where we're putting black eyeliner. So I don't wanna do double work of brightening something then trying to darken it. I'm gonna put a little bit under that brow to kind of lift. And I know a lot of people carve out their brow and they do the entire thing, but if you just do a little bit right above the arch, AKA the where your brow should kind of lift it'll lift in that area versus doing like a blocked out version. We're just trying to get a nice even base so our eyeshadow sticks really nicely. So that's our concealer. So now I'm gonna apply some liner. I like to apply liner before shadow because um, having it underneath and having it on top of the shadow, I feel like it just kind of comes through a lot better because sometimes when you have really shimmery shadow and you try to put eyeliner over top, it just doesn't really lay down right. So I'll be using Urban Decay's 24-7 Glide On Eyeliner in Perversion. I've used this so many times. It's just a really super black long wear eyeliner. Uh, same brushes, Makeup Match, the Precision Concealer Brush. I'm gonna be using it as a smudge brush because it just has this nice little point on it. I can do so much with it. I have like five of these because they just work so well for eyeshadow and concealing. So we're gonna do almost like a tight line, smudgy liner here. Okay. We're gonna go in between the lashes and make sure um, that's nice and dark because we want it to be dark on top. That's gonna to create lift because you're gonna look above versus below. I'm just kind of taking this and gently wiggling this between her lashes. Because I don't want any gaps with the liner. I don't wanna see any little pieces of skin in between. 
this is going to look a lot more um, just kind of seamless and nice. Next we're going to take the brush and do the same little motion where I'm just kind of gently smudging it. And what we're going to do to create a wing effect without like a liquid liner is we're just going to remove but in like a little upward motion. That's going to create a nice little lift. That's so cool. As we kind of wiggle outward, getting in the inner corner, you can kind of see it's really tight to the eye. You can't see any little pieces of flesh between the lashes, which is like key to making it look seamless. Then we're going to do the other side. If you have issues with eyeliner being too thick, aim for the eyelashes, not necessarily the eyelid. Doesn't, when you're doing on the eyelash, mm -hmm. is it, um, it feels like it's not going to smear as much as if I were, when yeah. I'm putting it on top of the eye. I mean, it depends on the eyeliner, I think. I think I feel like it definitely stays a lot better because it's kind of sandwiched in between the lashes. Mm -hmm. But um, this particular eyeliner just doesn't really go anywhere. As long as there's nothing, as long as whatever you have underneath, you have a little primer or a little eye concealer or something. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the oils that kind of come through, like on, oh, a na okay. on a naked eyelid. Okay. They kind of create that creasing effect. Look down and look over here. We're just going to get that inner corner again. Make a really good eyeliner, making sure there's no gaps of flesh showing, making sure the inner corner looks really nice. It's kind of like hemming a dress, like it just looks finished. And I guarantee, um, good solid eyeliner but in sloppy eyeshadow is going to look a lot better than like vice versa so it's also really important when you're trying to get a bright look the liner is tight enough to her eyelid uh or her lash line that it's not covering her entire eyelid covering your entire eyelid is totally fine it's a look it's like more of a smoky darker eye but when you're going for a brighter lid uh something that's more open you want to be able to look forward and not have your entire eyelid covered with eyeliner so just make sure it's nice and tight to the eye Okay, so now we're gonna move into eyeshadow and we're gonna be using the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions eyeshadow palette. So this palette, like if you watch any of my eye makeup tutorials, you know I love cream. Um, I always use cream when I do eyeshadow just because your eyes move so much and so many people say their eyeliner or their eyeshadow cracks and creases that cream underneath is just gonna like solidify it and like cement it literally on your eye. So this one actually has two creams. The reason it's under this little shield is because they would dry out otherwise, so you want to keep that down when you're not using them. And then it has 10 uh, eyeshadows. Uh, the bottom row that's embossed with the P and the T are all matte, and then you have like varying degrees of shimmer and glitter at the top. So I'm going to go in with the same makeup match, all the brushes I'm using. This is the shadow brush, just flat. And I'm actually going to play with the cream, the darker cream down here. Mm. And I'm just going to add a little dimension to the outer corners. Um, when you're lifting, when you add more darkness to the outer corners, that's naturally going to lift versus dark all around. So I'm just having her look straight ahead. We're going to add some of that darker cream right in that outer corner. And we are going to take same, again, makeup match. This is the precision crease. And we're just going to slightly blend it. Now with her eyes open, I know how high to go. I know how low to go. So again, with lift, it's all about darker things being on the outer corner, darker things being on top, not going super heavy below the eye. So we're just going to add a little bit of that darkness. And when you're doing your eyeshadow and you're trying to get a dark crease or dark something and it's just you keep packing it on you dip in that palette a million times um doing a little bit of cream or something is really just going to make it so so easy so playing with creams i know it can be kind of intimidating in the beginning but it's not very hard and it'll make your job so much easier i've had my makeup on since 9 a.m and it's what time to pick up kids <laughs> like five o'clock or something so mm. it's not going anywhere so we have that nice darkness in the outer corner and it's already kind of providing lifts because her natural skin tone is lighter than that color. So it's kind of giving us this up and out effect. Now we're going to take a bit of the eyeshadow and I think I'm going to go in with this shade right here, the darker brown that's not the reddish color. So now I'm just applying the shadow button and open for me. It looks straight ahead. So think of a cream and a powder. Um, when I lay down the cream, kind of like when you put liquid foundation on and you set it with powder, this is like really setting it, solidifying it. 
Makeup artists tend to use creams and that's why Patrick put the cream in here because it just looks really good. That's why celebrities look so good even when they take photos with flash at night because they always have creams on their eye. That's the secret? Yeah. <laughs> so glad you just told me. powder just kind of fades away and doesn't really look like anything on flash, so it helps. Wow. Now I am grabbing my other crease brush. So there's really tight crease brushes and there's really fluffy ones. Mm -hmm. I like to lay down, um, the tight ones are more pre precision. Um, I like to lay down darker colors with those and sort of like lighter colors or like wishy-washy blending. I like to use the fluffier ones. Okay. So now we're gonna go into this sort of peachy color. It's kind of mocha. And we're just gonna soften that crease a little bit. We don't want to do too much. We just want it to look like a natural transition with her skin tone. So if you have a lighter skin tone, maybe use a lighter color. Okay, so, so whenever I'm going for a really bright lid, I take a little bit extra of my concealer and just dab it right where I want it just to kind of re-brighten that area. And then I lay down a little bit of shimmer. Um, concealer or like a, a brighter cream shadow can do a lot. Let's go ahead and close. So again, same collection of brushes. This is just the shadow brush. And this is kind of like you would do a cut crease, but I never really do cut creases because I feel like it kind of forces people's eyes to be a little too, too, much, too geometric for my artistry taste. I like a little bit softer of an eye. And this I think is flattering on a lot of people. So we're adding in that brightness to the lid you can kind of see that roundness of the eyelid versus this one, even though it has a little bit of concealer on. And then while it's still wet, we're gonna grab a bright shimmery color like this one. And we're gonna press it on. This is so calming. I wanna fall is asleep. <laughs> yes. The first time I got I my makeup so done, <laughs> she was quite rough. So I think I like promised myself that I would always be like butterfly kisses to people. No, it's, it's really calming. I'm like, don't want to fall asleep because it's so relaxing. Yeah, it's a compliment. People always say that. Or they do fall asleep. <laughs> so with glittery shadows, this is like a nice, like fun, flaky glitter type of texture. You kind of want to pat it on and build it. Or you can kind of do it with your fingertips, but my nails are kind of long. And again, pack on as much of that shimmer as you want to. It's kind of like this pretty translucent glow. It's hard to describe. Go as big and as round as you like. I think the, the bigger and rounder that you make the eyelid, the more um, open the eye will look, and especially with the shimmery color. It's gonna look really nice because it's gonna catch the light really nicely. I didn't really get any fallout, which is really impressive with a flaky glitter like that. So I don't really have much to clean up, but I'm just gonna that crease. Now we're going to touch up our eyeliner. I always do that, put eyeliner underneath eyeshadow and on top, but we don't have to do as much work because it's it's there. I just wanna make this outer corner a little bit more apparent. Go ahead and close. Now fallout, is that like, when you when you say fallout, does just that mean? Just like in the shadow kind of falls like on your cheeks and stuff. Like, especially when you do oh. darker eyeshadow, it uh -huh. happens a lot. Okay. And usually with glitter it happens, but this one stayed put. Okay. I think like because um, I was pressing it on, kind of tapping it on, mm -hmm. and kind of gingerly with it, it didn't really fly everywhere. Because usually with glitter, you'll it'll be all over your nose and your cheeks and everything. But this one behaved, which is nice. So I want to use the brush over my finger. Mm -hmm. when I'm doing like that. Right. or like a big foundation brush or something. I just kind of dust okay. it. Or you can use like tape. I think this looks really pretty. We're gonna touch up the concealer, even though you don't really need much of it. We're gonna touch up the concealer and put some mascara on. I think there's this misconception that shimmer is not for mature eyes. I really do think my theory is people tried shimmer eyeshadow in like the 80s and 70s, and it just wasn't a, as nice of quality as it is now because right. I used to play my mom's makeup and it was just not the same texture and quality. And I think, you know, you try something once, you kind of like, oh, it doesn't work for me, but the shimmer textures, like metallics right. and satins are so much better and so much smoother, even from when I first started doing makeup. So I implore you to try a shimmer. If I called five of my makeup artist friends right now, they would say the first thing it would do mm -hmm. on a mature eye is put shimmer on it because it reflects so much light, you can't tell what's going on. Um, so if you do have some like lines or wrinkles or texture or unevenness or like hooding that you wanna cover, shimmer is usually the way to go. 
just pick a high quality shimmer. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put some mascara on before I decide what I wanna do on the bottom. So this is a mascara from Ilia. This is the new one if you're familiar with the original that is like a bestseller. This is the fullest volumizing mascara. So it has a super huge volumizing brush. I love a volumizing nice. mascara. So do I. You could lay it on thick if I you know. want. <laughs> I will. Go ahead and close. So we're gonna put it on, you know, evenly, every lash of course, but we're gonna concentrate the majority of it or pay special attention to the outer corner because again, outer corner creates lift. Now it's interesting the way I'm feeling that you're putting on the mascara mm -hmm. because usually I just take the brush kind of like a wand and I go like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's know? kind of the same thing. It's just, I, I like to go side to side because it just gets every little lash. Mm -hmm basically like load up the lashes and then like if I find any clumps or anything because it's always so so different applying on someone else right then I go right. through and I fix any clumps this is great and again everything we do should be in an upward motion um, so even though I am what kind of wiggling it and I'm going on the tops of the lashes as well as the bottom every um, stroke of mascara that I end with is always going up I want to get as much lift as I can. I'm gonna make a mental note because I just told you I go like that like yeah, I want so always now up. I know. So again what we said about the bottom of the eye we only want to do a little bit we don't want it to be naked we don't want her to take a photo and just have a floating iris we want it to be have some <laughs> definition at the bottom um, so what we're gonna do is take that original cream that we were playing with that dark brown cream and we're just gonna put a little, go ahead and look up. Right on this outer corner. Just a tad. And having that little like sort of V shape on the outer corner is gonna create this lift where it kind of comes together. That's gonna be really nice. Okay, so I think that looks really pretty. You don't have to put a ton on the bottom. I think a lot of people, especially when you have darker skin, think you have to put black on the bottom. Like I usually, when you see me on camera and you ask me what I'm wearing, I usually always have a copper or taupe or something on. I rarely ever use black underneath my eye just because I want my eyes to look really big on camera. So I'm going to finish up with the concealer. You can do it beforehand. I usually, when I do my own face, I usually do concealer beforehand, but just in case I got fallout, cause I'm more susceptible to fallout on someone else. I like to do it after, cause I don't have to like wipe it off and do double work and all that. So now we're doing concealer and we are gonna hit this outer corner and kind of create some lift here. And I'm just gonna pat it in with my finger because body heat works to melt things into your skin because when products are formulated, they are tested to work on skin, which is 98.6 degrees. So it using your hands to kind of warm things up helps to melt it. I feel like a kindergartner, <laughs> I'm like learning all this stuff. I I'm always like, say that because Whoa. people think that this is great. I don't know where it came from, but I think that people think that not using a tool to do something makes it kind of like amateur. Mm -hmm. Everybody everybody who's a great makeup artist, they all use their hands because they know it yeah. looks more like skin. Wow. So if you use your hands to do makeup, that's the original way it was intended to be. It looks more skin-like because it's already warmed up. I just like the scientific way you explained it about the body heat because yeah. mentally it makes sense. Yeah, if you, you test know? a foundation, like when we do product development, if I test foundation on like a, like a metal palette, sometimes you use to mix makeup, you're never gonna know how it's gonna wear. You always have to test it on human people. Oh, and wow. I think all human people are 98.6, unless something's wrong with you, you're 98.6. <laughs> so you can all agree that that's the temperature it's in. Or sometimes people like in Miami versus Alaska, they're gonna want different things just because the outside temperature is gonna react a little bit differently. But if you feel like your makeup looks a little heavy or dry, just try to use your hands to warm it up a little bit. So we're almost kind of doing that concept when people carve out their brows, but I'm kind of carving this out to create a little bit of lift, kind of going upward with it, but not harshly. We don't wanna create any harsh lines. And I'm concealing but I'm using her natural skin tone. I'm not going all the way up to the lash line because she already has a natural brown around the eyes. So I don't have to put any color there because she already has color there. 
you never want to cover up anything that you could use like if someone has a lot of red in their skin I usually don't cover it all up because why would I do that and then put blush on them things like that <laughs> counterintuitive yeah you're working harder so I'm just gonna press this in make sure I like it and I'm just gonna put a little down the nose because when you do a lot of brightening under the eye people tend to just look at the brightness under your eye um, so I like to dash a little concealer in at different areas to trick people that this is naturally occurring and she doesn't have concealer. Okay. Okay, so we're going to show you because we haven't seen it yet. Wow. It's really pretty. Wow, you did amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. Like, oh my your gosh. Your eyes are big and round, super defined. Love it. Wow, you did so good. Eyeliner is nice and black and like defined, but it's not all the way around. Like so your that. eyes still look lifted. That's really pretty. Oh, well, <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you. Really I pretty. love it. Those of you at home, it's super easy to do. It's probably like just a more detailed version of what you're already doing um, with the explanation about why you're doing it. Because I always think like when you know why you're doing something, you just become better at it. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and watch this. Follow along. Definitely. Save it to your favorites because I feel like I always save a million things to my favorites that I can learn later. Yes. Uh, subscribe to our channel. We did some other videos with Bacarda today. So if you want to see her again, us play around with some more makeup, you got to subscribe so you see those. Uh, maybe in the comments below let me know what tip you took away from here did you learn anything new or if you have a favorite tip that's always really cool to to share with other people yes the mascara that is hers that's her <laughs> mascara that's my gift to her um so we will see you next time thank you so much bye, bye.